There's about 11 million bits of sensory data coming into your system at any given time. Sounds like an awful lot, doesn't it? It's through all of your senses, your sight, smell, sound, touch, hearing. You're getting bombarded with sensory data. The thing is, our poor little human brains can only cope with so much. We've developed the ability to uh, filter most of it. 99.9% of it is filtered down into uh, sort of subconscious reactions. I'll give you an example. If you're walking across um, the street and a uh, bus comes flying behind you and you don't see it, and you, 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 all of a sudden they beep the horn, you'll leap, hopefully, to the path to, out, of, uh, out of danger. Now, that wasn't something you consciously decided to do. Suddenly, the scenario dictated that you had to run quickly and get to safety. But we have to do it that way because we can't possibly uh, filter out everything else that we work with. Now, who's heard the expression 7% and 38% and 55%? It gets thrown around quite a lot. This chap here, Albert Moravian, he was the uh, chap that actually did the study. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but a lot of people cite his findings as being, uh, in the broadest sense, that it's all communication. But actually, if you read the detail, it's, uh, for those that haven't looked into it, it's not actually... Uh, to be taken literally, uh, because it is true that 93% um, of uh, your message may well be non-verbal, but actually his study was aimed uh, partic in a particular uh, context, it was just the study of um, whether people liked or disliked things, and it was to do with emotion, and it was, to do, it was also between the different sexes. So, actually, it wasn't meant to be taken in the broader context of all types of communication. However, it still stands true that there's an awful lot um, of information that comes through your body language over and above what you've actually said. What's that um, thing that helps uh, deaf people to hear? What, what is that called? Hearing aid. Brain. 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 No, because right. right. no, right. right. ah, you see, no. <laughs> <laughs> that, a lot of people actually do say uh, braille, but the point is, <laughs> what did you believe? What I was saying or what I was doing? For a lot of people, and, and this tends to work wherever you do it. For a lot, not everybody, of course, but for a lot of people. Um, we tend to sort of automatically just, we see, we believe what we see uh, as opposed to what we hear. And there was a, qu a quote that I didn't add into this material that um, you should uh, believe um, half of what you see and none of what you hear. So it's, uh, that, that's an example. We've got so much that we need to take on board at any given time. We can't consciously deal with uh, with all of it. So what we have to do is start chunking it down and, and send things down to automatic responses. So we start to profile situations. So certain noises, things happening, we, we tend to sort of uh, filter a lot of things out so that we don't focus on them. The things we focus on tend to be the things that stand out, the things that are a little bit unusual, the things that shouldn't have happened. They're the things that get our attention. Most of what goes on in life doesn't get uh, our immediate conscious focus. About 11 million bits of sensory data, our poor little human brains can only cope with so much.